Gentlemen, welcome back to the T. Shanley starting a business, building a brand vlog. This one, big number, 367. So before we get to your amazing business questions, I do want to give you the final, I think it's final, enemy update. Um, for those of you who've been following along, you know that I started a sunglass company a few years ago. Ups and downs, recently it's been a lot more downs, and I decided to pull the plug because as we've talked about before, time is your most valuable and precious resource. And every single day, you're gonna choose how you invest it. And so whether or not that's looking at social media, whether or not it's wasting time, whether or not it's playing video games, or whether or not it's working towards a goal or striving to do something amazing and working on your side hustle or going to your job, like we choose how we spend our time, whether or not it's with your family, like you choose every day. We all have the same amount of time, 24 hours in a day. And how you choose to invest this precious asset and valuable resource is going to determine where you end up. Well, for me, I was tired of investing my time into something that I didn't feel was going to ultimately pay off or I wasn't really excited or interested in. And so I made the decision about two months ago to shut down Enemy. And the problem was that, okay, it's easy to shut it down, right? You basically could just pull the plug. But the problem is that I had like over 4,000 pairs of sunglasses that I needed to sell through. And so at the time I'm like, you know, I don't know that I'm going to be able to sell through these things, but I had till the end of the year because December 31st, I was pulling the plug because I didn't want to have to file taxes for the next year. And so I had a limited amount of time that I was going to give myself in order to sell through these sunglasses. And so when I decided, all right, this is it 50% off. I'm selling as many as I can and I sold a ton. And then it got to where it's like, all right, there are only a select few styles that are left in inventory. I need to incentivize people to buy more or to, to, to basically buy them, right? I, I can't pass up opportunity. And so I reduced it to 60%. Now, gentlemen, for the remaining en enemy inventory, they are 70% off any style that is left. Now, we also have some badass wallets that are leather, minimal card holders that are incredible. They are 75% off along with the enemy accessories like bracelets. Um, we have, as of today, as the time, as I'm filming this, we have 150 sunglasses left total. Uh, you guys, I just want to thank. Um, you guys were crazy supportive and you guys bought the enemies. They're going to be collector's items someday. And um, I just want to thank you. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for your support and your help moving through this inventory. You know, it, at, at this point, it wasn't about making money. It was about just not losing it because for me, any sunglass that I'm sitting on at the end of January or December 31st was basically an absorbed cost, right? Anyway, I just want to thank you. I just want to say, you know, you guys crushed it. And if you're interested, there still may be some styles left. And they're going to be 70% off until I'm done. Literally, like I said, I've got like 100, I think last I checked was like 150 units. Um, we only have a few styles left, but uh, thank you. And if you guys are interested in seeing if anything is left, I'm going to grab yourself an amazing <laughs> quality pair of sunglasses for a ridiculous price. Guys, now would be the time. 70% off any well, supplies. Like, like, like now is the time. All sales are final. If you guys are interested, enemy.com, link below. Now what I want to do is actually get to some of your amazing business questions. But thank you, thank you, thank you so much for helping me not lose a ton of cash. The first business question is pretty interesting. It's kind of a personal question from our friend at C C okay, so so they changed YouTube changed everybody now has like a handle. So it used to be like you'd have a name, so I don't even, I'm not even gonna try and butcher this. It's from Z Dave Ski 2000. <laughs> what? YouTube, you're killing me. Anyway, he says, hey, Alf, a different kind of question for you here than usual. Can you speak to the level of importance you place on your personal image and how much of this is business related? Um, yes, I can. So he goes on, he asks a few other questions. So, so how much do I feel like my image how much do I pay attention in terms of the way that I look, my physical appearance, based on what I do for a living? And if I'm being completely honest, it's not like, I'm not like obsessive about my, my looks any more than I used to be, but I am aware of it. 
And what I mean by that is, is I've got to basically, okay, so, so how do I even answer this? Because the truth is that I've always cared about my appearance. I've always cared about my image, my style. I wanted to have good hair. I wanted good skin. I wanted to have a badass beard. I wanted to dress well. And I wanted my body to look good, right? From a very young age, at 12 years old, I was in the gym. And that is the one thing that I've always sort of done. It was the consistent thing that I had in my life forever was, was, was working out. And so I am always looking at my hair, checking to see, okay, am I on that? Like I am aware of it just because I am to some degree a vain person. I think we all are. You know, it just so happens that the businesses that I, I'm in, in terms of YouTube, right, doing talks and, and, and talks, <laughs> I'm dead talk, doing videos about image and style and personal presentation, you know, I think it does matter. I think that if I was some, you know, sloppy dude that wasn't paying attention, you know, how much would you actually believe what I'm talking about if I'm not living it, right? And my business is same sort of thing. Pete and Pedro, I've got a grooming company. T. Shanley, I've got a skincare company. I live the life that I am selling. And so, you know, it is something that I think about though, right? I know that I am getting older, but the truth is that I feel like I look good for my age because I practice what I preach. And so, yes, it is something that I'm aware of. I don't necessarily connect the dots in terms of I need to look good in order to sell things. That's not it. It's just, this is my life. This is who I am. This is the, the, you know, the, 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 the path that I've taken. I've always, like I said, I started cutting my hair when I was, when I was like six years old. I've always been in the style. My first day of kindergarten, my mom loves telling the story of me going in with a roll of scotch tape taped around my ankle because I didn't like the flare, right? This was back in like 19, like 81 or 82, the bell bottom. I didn't like that. I wanted to be nice and tight. So I've always been into image and style and grooming and looking good and working out. And so it's just part of my life. It's not necessarily because of my businesses, but my businesses have kind of formed because of the things I'm interested in. I hope that makes sense. But I, but I do want to, I do want to just, I do want to just mention something because I always was worried that when I started to get older, I would become like upset about it, right? In terms of, I thought that I would be the guy that was probably like getting Botox and the guy that was like, you know, coloring his hair and coloring his beard. Like I thought that that would probably be me if I'm being completely honest. But as I've kind of aged and gotten older and these like aging things happened, I've kind of embraced them. And it's not something that I'm embarrassed about or ashamed about. I kind of, I'm kind of cool, right? I'm like, yo, I'm okay with a little salt and pepper. I ain't getting them in my hair. I kind of dig it. As long as I continue to do the things that I can in order to feel and look the best I possibly can, I'm good. I'm good with getting older. And I'm really actually proud of myself because I thought that that would not necessarily be the case. But, um, but as I've gotten older, I really feel like it's just about continuing to take the best care of yourself as possible, eat well, you know, eat clean, you know, don't drink, don't smoke in excess, like, like do the best job you can. And if you live clean and you, you do the best job you can, you're going to look good for a long time. Good for your age. Right? And so I feel like I look good for my age. I'm 40, I think six. <laughs> anyway, the next business question comes from our friend. I'm not even going to say our, like, I can't even do that. It's least tasted, less tasted. What's up? It says, I have been a chef my whole life and I've recently found an opportunity to open a restaurant. I would need to take out a substantial loan to do so and I'm struggling to decide if it's worth the risk. I'd love, on, love to excuse me, hear your thoughts. What do you think I'm going to say? Yes, if it makes sense to you and it feels right. I don't want to be the person that says, yeah, just go for it. It's going to work out. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be hard, right? Restaurant industry and business is hard. I think more restaurants fail than succeed in terms of starting up in the first like two years or something like that. Restaurants are hard, but I also know I'm friends with somebody who is a crazy, wildly successful entrepreneur, restaurant, rent, restaurateur, right? He's killed it and he keeps killing it, but he would have never killed it if he didn't take that chance on the first one. So I think that for you, what I would recommend is start small. If there are ways to possibly mitigate your risk, in terms of taking in a partner or an investor, I think that might be a wise decision if it's something that you're comfortable with. But if you want to self-finance the whole thing, then you could also do that as well. You're going to have everything 
you know, to yourself if, if, if that is the case. But, you know, I think you're always, as a chef, you're always going to, I think as a chef, right, you're always thinking, oh man, someday I'd love to have my own restaurant, my own place, I'd love to do this, right? I think every chef probably envisions that. And so maybe now's your chance. Maybe now's your, 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 your chance to go for it, you know? I will say this, during COVID, that was the wrong time to, you know, start a restaurant. Can you imagine, you know, starting something, taking a loan, and then COVID hits? But nobody planned for that. Nobody saw that coming. And you can't live your life with the worst case scenario mindset, right? You've got to do the best job you can with the information you have and be smart. Don't overextend yourself, but it's an opportunity. And I think that you're going to regret it if you don't take the chance. And so be smart, congratulations. And um, I just wish you the best of luck. This is incredibly exciting. And make sure that the people that you get in bed with in terms of business partners, if you do go that route, um, you know, make sure you uh, make sure that you've got things in writing because business relationships, if it doesn't go well, are really tough to get out of. It's almost harder than a marriage, but you know what? You also, like I said, you can't be scared of worst case scenario, but also don't be so blinded by your excitement that you think that best case scenario is going to happen either, right? It's probably somewhere in the middle, but congratulations, good luck, and I'm proud of you. The next business question I think I kind of addressed from Point Break Paul. He says, number one, can we please have an enemy update and the status of cleaning out the inventory? All right, there it is. I've got like 120. By the time you're seeing this, it's less than that. I might be even sold out. Who knows, 70% off the enemies? Are you kidding me? Any Black Friday sales? Yes, they already dropped 70% off. I would love to ask you, could you please tell us one of the best pieces of advice you have ever been given that you hold dear to your heart? Whether it's personal life related or business related, yes. Okay, I can, that's an easy one. It's from my grandfather, my, one of my heroes, if not my number one hero. And he gave me a few, a few pieces of advice, but one thing that I always think of when it comes to business is you're either gonna feed your ego or your family, but you can't do both. This was something that, that to this day I think about when I have a tough decision, right? Because a lot of times, you know, when something will happen, you get emotional, you get invested that way, right? But unfortunately, a lot of times when you lead with emotion, it might not necessarily be the best decision for you from a business perspective or financially. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't some people that want to make a stand, but I've mentioned it before. You know, I don't want to alienate 50% of my audience by saying something that 50% of my audience I know is probably going to disagree with, which is why I don't talk about religion. I don't talk about politics. And I try to avoid or stick, stay away from real polarizing people or conversations because even though I may have an opinion, I don't necessarily feel that strongly about it in the sense that I want to basically express it to the world like a lot of these celebrities or a lot of these people, you know, you see it all the time. People will take a stand on something and it like the Dixie Chicks, I always think about the Dixie Chicks, right? They were like, you know, like they were also, they were also tone deaf. They were tone deaf to the fact that their audience, like 99% of them were very conservative, right? But they're gonna say something negative and derogatory in Texas about you know, the, the then president, you know, George W. Bush, right? And um, you know, not knowing or not thinking that you know, their audience was gonna retaliate and basically be like, F you, I don't align with you anymore. And so I'm not gonna buy your music. I'm not gonna listen to you. Like you're dead to me. And what happened? They died. Their career literally like went in the shitter. You know, so I think about things like that. What is a topic or something that I am that passionate about that I am going to or willing to risk everything for it? And so there's actually a friend of mine, um, Steve, <laughs> who was uh, my meteorologist buddy that I've mentioned before. If you guys have ever heard, I don't know that like you've heard the Alpha M story, you probably have. He was like client number one. He was the guy at the gym that came to me and was like, hey, what do you, well, I'm still friends to him, with him to this day. Like we've been friends for over 20 years. And he's kind of like my barometer of like, like protect the brand. He actually says that. He goes, protect the brand. There have been times that I've like filmed videos that I was like, cause I'd get like super pissed off about something. I'd want to talk about, I'd want to yell, like I'd want to like get it out, right? I'd film it and I'd say, Steve, this is the thing. This is the video. And he goes, 
are you going to like protect your brand or are you going to release that video? Because this is definitely going to alienate you from part of your audience. Now, the truth is that in today's world, you know, it depends on what you're looking to do. And so you've got some people that are very polarizing that have made a business out of being polarizing. And that's, if that's your thing, that's fine. But if you were trying to appeal to the masses, I want to help everybody. I want to appeal to as many people as possible. My best piece of advice that I've ever gotten that I hold true and dear to my heart is you can either feed your family or your ego. You can't do both. And as an entrepreneur, it's something to seriously consider and think about. The next business question is actually from our friend that asked the business question last time that I really couldn't answer because he was like, hey, I want to start, I got five business ideas. I want to start two supermarkets. And I said, whoa, <laughs> yeah, I need more information. And he says, hey, sir, it's me again, uh, blah, 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 who is 19 years old, who has five business plans, 19 years old. All right. He says, I know I didn't give you much information clearly. Sorry for that, sir. Now my question is out of my five business plans, which should I start? Number one is a supermarket. Number two is a clothing brand for men. Number three is real estate. Number four is a hotel. And number five is a restaurant. Wow. Lots of stuff. And it's all pretty expensive, except the clothing brand would honestly be kind of the, the easiest to get into, in my opinion, in terms of um, startup capital, because you can do it relatively inexpensively. But what happens is a clothing brand which some people are very successful with it, but if you don't have a big audience or a big following or a way to market it, it's really hard. And so they're all like, they're, they're, they're all great ideas. I just, they're, they're all very like, like they all take a lot of money and a lot of planning. And so, um, but out of your businesses, I mean, honestly, the clothing brand would be the easiest to start, but they're, all going to be challenging and they all have like their pros and cons. But if you don't have money, I, I think that like money, that's like, that's the number one thing you're going to need for any of these things. And so a clothing brand, like I said, is the easiest to start, but the marketing of it is going to be the toughest thing. And so I don't even know, I can't even answer this question very well. Um, let me know which one you end up doing. Um, but, they're all hard. Funny comment from our friend Nicholas, 7043, do not open a grocery store. I'm not a pessimist. In fact, I tend to be optimistic person. Hold on, there's more. But for the F sake, unless it's your absolute dream or you feel that it is your life's purpose to open a grocery store, just don't do it. Not only does a grocery store require an unholy amount of startup capital, the profit margin for a typical grocery store are very, very low. I think about 2%, which is really low. And then you have to compete with this absolute titans in the industry, such as Target, Kroger, um, and that, let's not forget Walmart, effing Walmart. The chances of you succeeding at owning a grocery store aren't impossible, but it's extremely low, especially in an already established city. I know this sounds harsh, but I'm just being honest with you. And again, if you're, if it's your absolute dream to run a grocery store, then give it a shot. But you just realize you're fighting an uphill battle at least best and that's where I am going to wrap things up. That was such a great comment and thank you. Um, but that's one man's opinion. Gentlemen, that is where I'm going to wrap things up. I thank you for everything. Thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting Enemy. Like I said, there may still be a few, few stragglers left. If you're interested, hit that link or wherever, enemy.com. It's an incredible URL that I have not sold yet. And that is where I'm going to wrap things up. Thank you for everything. And as always, we love you more than our dub. I almost forgot. If you got a business question down below, start it with business question and ask this vlog. It's all about you. It's all about me giving my opinion on some things that I know about a lot of things I don't, but I'm always willing to give you my best shot. Gentlemen, that's where I'm going to wrap things up. Thank you for everything. I hope you had an incredible Thanksgiving. I hope you're now on your diet. <laughs> like me, I'm actually, I'm actually trying to lose a few LBs. Long story. Anyway, do you want me to tell you about my wife quitting work? next week you want to if you do gentlemen down below say yo alpha tell me about your wife if you're still watching at this point you probably may be interested thanks for everything we love you more than our what double monk strap shoes later